model diagnostic setup for planning clear aligners in 1945 was given by Ricketts, Tweets, Angle or Kessling. So the answer for this question that is the diagnostic setup was given by Dr. Kessling. Okay, and this is an important question that is the Kessling's diagnostic setup. Okay, because they could ask you who has given this uh, setup. So, this was given by Dr. H. D. Kessling. Okay, or Dr. Harold Kessling. Now, this uh, Kessling is different from the Kessling who has given the tip edge appliance. That is Dr. Peter Kessling. Okay, so that's why they could ask you this question to confuse you between the two. Now, how is uh, this diagnostic setup done or how does it help us to uh, form clear aligners? So here you use an extra pair of uh, study models and what you do is basically you try to position the teeth, individual teeth in the cast uh, by repositioning them in wax. So here you see this in figure A, there are these study models which are given. Okay, so there is, you can see there is malocclusion present between the arches. So what you do in this setup is that you section each tooth individually by giving horizontal as well as vertical cuts. So these vertical cuts are going to give some amount of root portion also or simulate some amount of root portion and th these teeth are sectioned individually and they are removed. Okay. Now the first thing or the first uh, model that is used is the lower model. Okay, so in the lower model, what we first do is first we identify what the corrected position of the teeth is going to be based on the cephalometric analysis. So using the tweeds analysis, we first find out what is the corrected position of the lower incisors. Okay, and once you have removed or segregated or sectioned each tooth individually, one side of the lower arch is sectioned. Okay, the other side is used for guide or as a guide. Okay, you section this side and then based on this cephalometric analysis, the, whatever is the corrected position of the lower incisors, the lower incisors are repositioned in wax in the, in the similar uh, manner. Okay, and one side is completely repositioned, okay, up, up until the posteriors. So, if there is any space deficiency during uh, repositioning them in wax, you know that we might need to do some uh, extraction. Okay, if all the teeth are not fitting in the corrected position, we know we have to do some amount of extraction. Now, usually the first premolars are extracted, okay, but the second premolars can also be extracted depending on the space availability, right? So, this helps us to not only identify what the corrected positions of the teeth are going to be, but also helps us to plan the treatment, that is plan the type of extraction that needs to be done in each case. Okay, so once the uh, one side of the lower arches uh, has been uh, positioned in the correct position, then the maxillary arch of the same side is uh, subsequently uh, sectioned and repositioned in wax. Okay, and once the occlusion has been achieved, the desired occlusion has been achieved on one side, the same is replicated onto the other side. So this, so we can know what the end result of the treatment is going to look like. Okay, and uh, after the uh, tooth uh, position has been achieved, then we can use this uh, corrected occlusion in order to fabricate tooth positioners, okay, or retainers, okay, and the same principle can also be applied for the fabrication of clear aligners, okay. So, the uses of this type of a diagnostic setup is uh, to help to identify the diagnosis. Okay, helps in the diagnosis, helps in the treatment planning to identify the type of extraction that is required. Okay, when there is a space deficiency and also when there is a space excess, it can help us to identify the type of anchorage that is required. Okay. So, it helps us to assess the anchorage problems and also once the teeth have been positioned, we can use it for the fabrication of positioners.